This was amazing. And what it is, I'm going to just say as an audience first, that this was a scene with brown wrapping paper where everyone was under this brown wrapping paper. And you can never imagine the brilliant theatrical, or I don't even know theatrical, not categorizable, an event that came out of this. So that's enough of my review. Mm -hmm. So you, let's yeah. talk about that. That's just gorgeous. Well, uh, oh. one day, my artistic director uh, came over with a roll of brown paper, and she said, do something with this. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And uh, so then I got this idea. Well, with paper, how wonderful. You can really get all kinds of different shapes. But then I also thought, well, this is also wonderful because it relates the dancer to something outside of themselves to relate to. So mm -hmm. the dancer isn't always an object that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And this I was very influenced, I must say, by my husband. And I wanted to find something where the dancers were related to something outside of themselves, that they could create an environment that they became part of. Mm. I wanted them to be part of an environment, not self. Uh, look at me, look at me, look yeah, at me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that's how it happened. So it was a, a series of uh, accidents. Here's some brown paper, do something with it. Oh my God, what will I do with it? And then oh. the musician began to notice the sound. The sound. And then he loved it. And then I, different dancers began to develop different images, like images of water, of waves. Mm. And, and so that became a, a motivation for them. And it was very important that as they moved and tore the paper, that they would feel that connection between mm -hmm. this environment that was being created and the movement that it elicited. Well, you see, what I love also is the simplicity and the, you know, you didn't have gilded uh, tutus and, uh, <laughs> you know, enormous wigs and expensive, you know, kind of stuff. I mean, you had brown wrapping paper. What was that, $1.95? <laughs> and, right. and you had these uh, yeah. secondhand clothes, these shapes that, that, you know, and all this. And so, you know, in, in terms of the social statement and the, the level of creativity and the moving away from, um, from the conventional choreographic, you know. Now, I'm curious, in relation to developing these pieces, did you have funding or not? I mean, how did that no. happen? You did not. So, so rehearsal time and blah, blah, blah. So all that was done pro bono, I mm -hmm. mean, as they say, wow. Mm -hmm. We did have... Uh, of funding uh, to pay for our transportation, getting from place to place, uh -huh. from the, the festival that invited us. Like we were invited to the festival in Poland, we were invited to the festival in Sweden, and they, they paid for our hotel, our food, mm. and um, our transportation. But all of us had other jobs. I taught, uh, A.A. and John Graham taught, the children were just children. Mm -hmm. uh, the musicians, uh, they didn't get paid. They just did it because they wanted to do it. Well. But you know, in those days, um, the, the, the experimental arts w were not really acknowledged yeah, that's as true. being worthy of receiving grants. That's true. Yeah. I want to track this issue of you and naked bodies, though, a little All bit right. further. Okay, <laughs> in Breath Made Visible. Now, I didn't see the the um, the dance that you had that it came out of, but I saw it on your film, and the I think you were in your eighties when oh, you were yeah. nude then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're both, you know, I'm, I'm slightly younger than you are, but you know, we're both, you know, hovering in the same generation, the you know the older generation, etc. And that to me was so amazing that you were nude and that the body, the beauty of an aging body, the, the commemoration of wrinkles, mm -hmm. the commemoration of, the, of you know, what, what the weathering of life looks mm -hmm. like as it, greets, as it greets the sky. I mean, I can't tell you how important mm -hmm. that statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. I mean, and your, your courage in just, here it is. <laughs> I know. Here I am. This is what it is. So can you speak to that at all? 
Well, I was being very, uh, that came from a series that Andy Wilson did, uh, and, and it was about dancing, in, and it's called Returning Home, mm -hmm. uh, because I was returning back to the natural world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sort of the idea that I am old, I'm 90 now, I was Not in my work. 80s then, and uh, nature was has always been very important to me. I was born in a natural environment. Um, and so I related to all the, the aspects of nature, and that, that was a particularly interesting site because it was underground. You, you see, you just saw a little piece of it, mm -hmm. but actually it was under the underground. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. there were a lot of dead things around me, and I didn't have any time to design a dance. I would just be taken to an environment and put in it and say, now dance. So it was a total improvisation. So I noticed by my side there was this kind of mud stuff. Mm. And then, and, and I was very aware of kind of being buried as if mm. the, 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 the transition between life and death mm. was, I was in that transition state. And then I just began to put that mud on me so I could, oh. so I could begin to merge with the earth. And as I put that mud on me, I began to really feel my body. And that's how that evolved. And if you saw the end of the dance, I, I, I am completely covered by mud. I mean, I keep putting this on, and as I put it on, I keep moving with it. So it, it becomes more and more movement on me. And by the time the dance ends, I'm totally covered by mud. The and then I just crawl into a, a little a cave, like a little uh, burial space, and just merge with the mud. Oh. Yeah. So it just was a spontaneous reaction to my environment and what was there. I, I want to take, I want to keep uh, tracing our steps from um, that incredible 80 year old. Um, uh, Body. Body, mud, earth, return mm. to the illness mm. that you had and, and the courage that you had mm. in exposing the doing new dance mm -hmm. uh, with all of the effects of the illness. Mm -hmm. So can, do you mind taking us into that yeah. territory? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, I had a cancer. And um, uh, colon cancer. I had colon cancer, and I was left with a uh, stoma or colostomy. People know what that is who have had it, and uh, it was it was very traumatic experience. How old were you at that time? I was about uh, in my late fifties. Wow! And um, was cancer in your family? Did you? No. Nope. Mm -mm. So, what do you think? I mean, uh, well, I think. I don't know really for mm. sure, uh, but I think I was under a lot of pressure at that time in my life, trying to uh, balance being a wife, being a housekeeper, being a mother of two children, teaching, uh, trying to have a company. I, I, I just had so, I was mm. so uh, busy all yeah. the time that I never really had any time for myself just yeah. to relax or to take it easy, I think it may have come from stress, mm -hmm. just stress trying to deal with, uh, you know, being a wife, being a mother, being a professional teacher, yep. blah, blah, blah. Yep. I think it was stress, and because it certainly was something that came around the digestive area, yes. where, like I couldn't digest mm -hmm. uh, my life, it was just too much, mm -hmm. it just, I think that may have had a factor, um, and it was uh, it was a challenge. It was a challenge to deal with it. And were you scared? Oh yeah, yeah. I I I had no. Uh, everybody I knew at that time who had cancer died. Well, colon cancer is pretty and, and difficult. Yeah, but everybody. I didn't mm -hmm. know a single person that got through it. So. Um, and do you know what stage it was? No, you don't know. Remember. But uh, I had a pretty uh, uh, violent intervention 
in the way of an operation. How do you mean? Well, once they got in there, they decided to take my ovaries out. They, mm -hmm. I didn't even know until maybe 10 years later. I didn't even know they did that. And, and that messed me up. You mean they didn't tell you that, by the no. way, you know, they give you no. a list, you know, no, like no, a receipt? No, no. <laughs> by the way, I just want you to know <laughs> that while we were there, we decided, well, we might as well take your ovaries out right. there. A little enlarged. Your lungs, you know, we're going to do look through that. No, they didn't. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, they didn't. Oh, wait, excuse didn't. me, how much did you pay for this surgery? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, my God. It, it did was, you have chemo? No. But how no. lucky. Yeah. I wonder why you didn't have chemo. Um, because they operated. They just took see, everything out. So they thought out. it was okay. Yeah. And so they, you know, they just no, did a no massive radiation? operation taking everything out around that area. No radiation either? No. Wow, that was lucky. Just sheer intervention wow. operation. But um, I, I kind of feel hesitant to tell this part of the story, but I'll take a chance since I do that all well, the time. Well, you're so brave and out. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're being hesitant. <laughs> But um, he said to me, uh, the doctor said to me, uh, uh, you're cured now. Mm. And I said, that's funny. I may be cured, and I thank you for that, but I don't feel healed. Wow. And I, what I meant by that was, how did I get this? And, and, then, and I said something to that effect. And then he said, putting his hand assuredly on me, he said, well, if it doesn't reoccur in five years, you're scot-free. And then I thought to myself, well, but what if it does reoccur <laughs> in five years? Yeah. You know, uh, and it did. It did? Yeah, it did. And, oh, my uh, goodness. You uh, mean five years on the dot or somewhere? Well, within five years. Within, oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh. I think with it, it was about three years later. There oh was a goodness. recurrence. Well, okay, I want to stop for a moment. Did your lifestyle change at all? In other words, at, when, you had, when you were diagnosed, did you say, you know what, I better calm down, I better make space for myself? No, I and, didn't say so that. So you just continued uh, business yeah, I did. as usual. I'm so right. driven. Okay. But uh, I did change my intention. I did. What? So yeah, I I I, uh, I reexamined why why are you dancing? Uh -huh. Who are you dancing for? Mm. Does it make a difference to anybody? Mm. And I began to ask myself some serious questions about: Is it worth what you're doing? Mm. I mean, it, it, you're putting, you're investing your life into this with great passion. It, who are you doing this for? Right. Is it self gratification? Right. Or, or, you know, you've you you've experimented. You have found new directions. Now, what are you going to do? You free and liberate the possibilities that dance could really have something to do with real life. Mm -hmm. So now, where do you want to go with this? Wow. So that that's so. In, in that sense, it it did uh, alter my my direction, mm -hmm. definitely. I did not dance uh, publicly for many years, mm -hmm. but I did instead. I was working on the idea of rituals, mm -hmm. the idea of the difference between a ritual and a, uh, uh, a, perf a tr more traditional performance mm -hmm. where you do something for an audience. Mm -hmm. I began to want to do things with an audience, mm -hmm. not for them, but with them. Mm -hmm. and. So it did change a lot from uh, being a purist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my standards of what worked and what didn't work were changed. It wasn't on the basis of the aesthetics. It was more on the basis of healing, mm -hmm. more on the basis of how dance could be a healing force. Mm -hmm. I began working with people with cancer. I began mm -hmm. uh, doing all ki choosing various projects that I felt had a healing uh, dimension to it. Great. So, so it, it did. It, it definitely... Yeah, it, it catapulted me into right. another uh, direction of exploring po new possibilities of the role of dance. Right. So, so then when you, you had a reoccurrence, yeah. so then what happened? 